there are people who do it better than me, and and yeah. and, and, and it's not a you know. Um, and, and the photographs are sort of are better than 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 than, uh, than sketches by by um, teenage boys. Um, mm -hmm. But but the um, see that in itself though is interesting. The the the, the uh, when you drill down into you know what skills you've got that can can make it work, you've got to be at your best. You've got to be top of your game. Mm -hmm. And I you know, as I said before, I can write and I can draw. Yep. I can't write like Shakespeare. I can't draw you know, like Michelangelo, but I know I'm good enough at it to know the difference between a good ad, a, a good idea and a bad idea, a good drawing and a bad drawing. So hello and welcome to another edition of Better Business, Better Life. Today I am joined by a man who needs no introduction. His name is Mike Hutchison and he is a company director and business advisor these days. But back in the day, he was the managing director of Saatchi and Saatchi, amongst other things, and also an adjunct professor at Auckland University of Technology. Welcome to the show, Mike. Well, thank you very much indeed. Delighted to be here. Oh, I'm looking forward. I always love our conversations. They they don't often go where I expect them to, which is why I quite enjoy them. Um, so, Mike, tell us a little bit about your your story. Tell us about you. Tell us how you got to where you are today. Um, mostly by accident, uh, and uh, grew up all over. My father was a school teacher, uh, and so we moved from places like Motueka to Omaru to to, um, to Wanganui to Nelson and where he taught at various things. He ended up actually at one stage being the headmaster of the private school um, where I was a boarder at age eight. And you may think that there's nothing wrong, wrong with me. <laughs> <laughs> But I, it, 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 on reflection, I wouldn't have sent my own children to uh, a school where my father was the headmaster, particularly a boarding school at age eight, yes. because it's really a a, a, um, a recipe for either um, a beating a day uh, or or or, or a, a cozying up um, as, for, as son of the headmaster for a day. But at, at the same time, um, it was uh, it was like actually growing up at Hogwarts. It was quite a traditional uh, prep school and. Yeah. Uh, um, although uh, I never quite knew my father, um, he'd he'd actually gone to war um, straight after graduating at university. He had an MA in, in English and French, and was because I guess because he was reasonably well qualified, he was uh, sent straight to Sandhurst for his officer training. Missed yeah. the first part of the the war. His battalion was serving in Greece and Crete. He missed that while he was at Sandus, but rejoined the battalion in Syria. They went through the whole Egypt or North Africa campaign, El Alamein, Tobruk, etc., ending up in, in Italy and towards the end of the war uh, in a place called Rimini, just um, south of, well, reasonably south of Venice. He was very badly wounded and he never recovered. And, mm -hmm. um, and not, not until the end, he had, I remember my mother, who was a nurse, dressing his wounds every morning. Um, they were superating his entire life. Must have been ter terrible for him. Mm. Um, and he became an alcoholic. He wasn't um, He wasn't himself. I guess they'd call it PTSD uh, today. But then, of course, it was pull yourself together, man. Yeah, get yourself and, uh, yeah. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Um, and he, 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 he committed suicide when I was 10. Oh. So I never really knew him uh, except as headmaster or um, – as he asked me to call him Peter, um, but so, but I did learn. I think I did my military service by the time I was ten years old, um, and I was never allowed to be late for breakfast or split my infinitives. And so I, I learned quite a few things the hard way. Yep. Um, but I realised then uh, I was a dreamer. I'm currently actually going through a diagnostic um, process with ADD. I didn't know I had it until um, much later. In fact, my own son has. Um, uh, Asperger's, my grandson, is um, uh, ADHD and um, Tourette's, and apparently it's patrilineal, so it possibly has come from me. So it's urged me to to go and get the diagnosis so I know, A, what to do, and how can I help my son and grandson. Um, so that's through. what prompted you to kind of go and get the diagnosis, and then yeah. you've actually discovered you are ADHD, right? Yeah. Yeah? yeah. And you had yeah. no idea before that? No, no, no I, I just thought I was a little bit different. I see things differently. Yeah. Um, um, and... Uh, I've always been a natural contrarian, um, but I go in, in fits and starts. I have you know, amazing bursts of energy while I write a book, mm -hmm. and then I'll sit around staring to space for a while without quite knowing what I'm supposed to be doing or, or, or why I'm doing it. In fact, um, Michelle, my wife, who, who's she, she's actually um, um, my, my therapy spouse. <laughs> yeah, uh, she, 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 she's uh, very much fit on the ground. And she came across my um, school report, uh, I think at age 10 or 11 recently, and it said um, 
Michael is inclined to daydream. If he spent less time looking out the window and more time paying attention, orders for the whole class would not have, be have to repeat it for his benefit. No, <laughs> nothing's like nothing, at school. Yeah, okay. <laughs> nothing, nothing has changed. Yep. Um, and I, um, I realised then that, that the only two things I can do are write and draw. I mean, that, that I don't have any marketable skills apart from that. And um, I sort of very soon realised. I, I well, I, I actually got an, an um, I was enrolled at. Um, Island, um Art School, having done right. fine arts for a year. And I enrolled at the Island, but I decided um, that I wasn't going to go because in my final year, my year 13 at school, seventh form as it was then, yep. um, I was told I couldn't have first place in class because I'd just done art. Um, or I'd done art in English. I actually came to top of English, but anyway, that didn't really count. But that didn't count. That they didn't, didn't, they didn't, count. They no. didn't recognize no. English as being... No, no, no it, 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 was, it was it was odd. It was odd. Mister Denham was a form master, and yep. he said, "Your marks are ridiculous, Hutchins." I mean, this you got an A in oil painting. How, how do I compare that to a boy who's done one in mathematics? I said, well, I'm, I'm seventeen for goodness' sake. I, I don't know, sir. And um, he said, "Well, it's it's ridiculous." And you got a B plus in sculpture. Do you make pots? I said, "Those are we actually have to do copies of Michelangelo's David's hand and nose and feet and and um, and ears." Oh, he said, well, I, I, I don't, I, this is silly. I'm not going to, um, I'm not going to, I'm going to leave you off. Um, I, you, you've done quite a different course. I can't put you on the table. And the guy who got first place in class did um, uh, finance, went on to do finance and, and accounting. So I've got this deep and abiding mistrust and loathing of um, people who do accounting and, 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 and finance. I've, and heard, I, I've heard that from you before. Oh, yeah, yeah, that's right. I mean, Witness that first hand. Yeah. I, I, I shouldn't be. But most of my, all of my friends are accountants, so I, I have to keep on apologising to them. Uh, but but my point is not that I don't, not that no, I just like them. It's not about people. Uh, yeah. I, 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 it's just that we focus on the wrong things. Yeah. And and I think that that you know the World Economic Forum has said that the most important skills in the next decade are going to be complex problem solving. Critical thinking and creativity. Right. Now they weren't even on the list ten years ago, yeah. and and it's it's we're not going to to um, buy our way out of a recession by selling overpriced houses to each other, <laughs> and inflationary um, effect, effects on our economy generally. Um, mm -hmm. We're having to think differently and 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 do new things. And, and those and, traditional subjects don't teach that kind of thinking, do they? No, they don't. The maths, the science, the, no, the they don't. Uh, yeah. And I think that well. I, I, actually, mathematics, funny enough, although I was no good at it, um, um, I've actually come to be fascinated with it now, okay. and, and particularly nu and nuclear physics. Uh, yep. Well, well, and um, uh, I think that, that that the whole notion of subatomic particles and uh, quantum mechanics, I've just got a, an intense um, interest in now um, because there's some kind of a, a language out there that I do understand. I don't understand, um, didn't understand algebra, but I do understand physics, and I do understand. Um, and, and the arithmetic of it all, and the multiplication of it all, but I think that that, that to me, um, it's figuring out new ways to do things and, and how to live better. Yeah, you know, for example, um, uh, as I said, the, the, the only two skills I've got are to be able to write and draw, mm -hmm. um, and they're not really they were never good enough to to um, find me a job, and I'm pretty much unemployable anyway. Um, I, the, 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 I've had to start my own company to in order to. Uh, or to have a living, and uh, there's nothing. Uh, no one else in their right mind would actually employ me for long. I, you know, I did work for the university for a while, and I found it the most detestable, um, stultifying, and soul destroying thing I've ever done in my life. Oh, really? Yep, I lost the will to live. Why do you say that? Um, because it's bureaucratic, um, yep. and it's hidebound, mm -hmm. uh, and it's there's a close little coterie of what they call the the um, the academy. Mm -hmm. um, who basically circle the wagons and keep you out if you're not one of them. You've got to have come up through the ranks in order to, to do it. If you come in from the outside like I did um, as a business person, and I, I did my master's theory, uh, a thesis, sorry, yep. um, on the alchemy of creativity in business and developed a, a program which is an online program. The, the textbook is an app. Um, the whole um, course is run online. Mm -hmm. um, and it really um, went right against the traditional classroom teaching of of, of most university lecturers. And I found that, that, that um, it's uh, mediocrity rather than meritocracy in, in a university. There are a few brilliant teachers um, and my supervisor 
from an MPhil thesis was brilliant, Professor Welby Yings, but he was a, a, a contrarian too. And being a contrarian, you simply don't fit in. And, and um, that, to be a, net, a university lecturer wasn't the pinnacle of success. Right. As far as I was concerned. Fair enough. <laughs> yeah. So tell us about your, your starting your own business then. So you... Yeah. Well, so, um, uh, I think I was quite a entrepreneurial um, in the art room in my final year at school. Um, we would draw um, nudes for the boarders. And so, we, we, you know, for, for I think it was a shilling uh, for, for someone in a bikini, uh, <laughs> and, 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 and sorry, sixpence for someone in a bikini and a shilling if they were nude. Right. And so I learned you know, that there were things you could do with art, which I think well, make money. Was, uh, <laughs> we didn't make very much money. <laughs> but, yeah. uh, but, but one of my colleagues also had managed to purloin some um, sherry out of his uh, father's grog cabinet. So on the days that a brilliant art master was doing adult stuff in the city, mm -hmm. um, we would have a little soiree in, in the art room for people who were, you know, um, wanted um, some uh, new sketches. So that, that, that was my first episode. Then, um, then um, I enrolled at, at uni, but because I was told I couldn't have first place in class and I'd been accepted into Ireland, <clears throat> I got the pip through my toys and enrolled at law school, uh, which is the oh. silliest mistake of my life. But a cousin of mine was a lawyer, and he said, look, you're in the debating team. You should actually – you'll be a good lawyer. And mm -hmm. I thought, oh, I quite fancied probably wearing a, a red cassock and a, and a wig. Uh, I, I'd shifted straight from law school to, to the bench. You know, yep. so, but um, I realized uh, that law is very tedious, and learning law is, is – um, basically by rote um, and the analysis of stuff, which now, of course, is done by chat GPT mm. far, far better than any, any brain like you can. can. Yeah. Um, I didn't know that. Uh, I'd love to say that it was perception on my part that one day it'd be done by a machine. But in fact, I was just bored, witless, uh, doing law. Yep. I discovered advertising by accident. Um, and, hey, there's a business that people write and draw. And it was kind to me. And so... Um, we started Colenso in, in the early days, but I took a break from advertising at one stage. My wife's family had a building company, which wasn't doing well. They asked me to join the board and see if we could fix it, which mm -hmm. we did. And then I said, look, I'd like to, but I didn't know anything about building. So I took myself to Polytech and did a diploma in construction and, and real estate. So I knew the difference between a stud and a dwang mm -hmm. um, and was able to do things like that. And then because of my sketching hobby, I used to sketch uh, old houses and my great, 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 Great great grandfather, great 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 three grands uh, grandfather was one of the early colonial architects in Nelson. A lot of those old neo Gothic houses, the churches and so on, the cathedral and old provincial chambers he had designed in the eighteen fifties. Mm -hmm. And whenever we went to to, to to Nelson for holidays, my mother lived there, so we'd often you know take the kids there. And I'd go around sketching the old houses. My wife said, "Why can't we have one of those?" And I said, "Well, they're in Nelson." And uh, she said, "Why can't we build one?" And I thought, "Well, we've got this building company now. Let's give it a go." And so we tried that, and in fact, I went back to the, her family and said, look, I, this business is going well now, I'd like to buy it. And they said, no, it's going well, we'll keep it. <laughs> and so I said, oh, damn. So I went out on my own and set a company called Replica Homes. I basically took the old designs that my great, great grandfather had designed in the 1850s, yep. turned them around to face the sun rather than the street, you know, yep. got to them, you know, see thousands of them now in um, in, in Greyland and Ponsonby and all the trendy suburbs in Auckland in particular, yep. and in fact, all, all throughout the country. And so that was it. And, and I set up a franchise um, building um, chain throughout the country. But I didn't know much about brand. Well, I didn't know much about anything. Um, but I've always been a pioneer. Mm -hmm. And what I have learned being a pioneer is you can narrow up your ass mostly. And I went out um, uh, and found um, franchise builders. I struck up a, uh, an arrangement with a very well-known and very big um, Timber, con uh, timber supply and construction company in Christchurch. And I said, look, I'll go around and sell these building packs, if you like, the all the components the and the doors, the architraves, all the fiddly bits that go into a, a, a colonial house Yep. Um, and set up franchise builders throughout the country. I thought if I started in Invercargill, by the time I got to Auckland, I'd have figured out the right way to do it. <laughs> and so for about um, eight or ten years, I just did that. And um, But it was, it, was, it, it, it was a living rather than a business. I didn't right. know what really to charge. And I, so I was under undercharging, um, uh, undervaluing uh, the idea of um, a franchise. I think I was doing 2.5%, and, and it should have been 6 right. Um So I had, a, business, I had a, a living, but not a business. And I went back into advertising, and we started an agency called HKM, which went really, really well until it didn't. And, uh, <laughs> That's always the way, isn't it? <laughs> yeah. it, 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 it? We grew so fast. It was unbelievable. We went from, I think, 
turn over five million to almost fifty eight million. It was wow. but we got the speed wobbles. You know, we were the we were the hot trot. We were the, doing all the the clever things. Yeah. Um, but um, like all these things, well, not like all these things, but like many times, um, the, if the partners don't get on, the enemy is always the enemy within rather than without, and uh, yeah. and that fell apart. But um, and then I, I joined. What, what, what do you think was the the main reason? I mean, you said that yeah, that you got the speed wobbles, but what what really <coughs> happened? Grow too fast, or yeah, go too fast, yep. um, too fast. Um, egos, um, um, and yeah, quite violent. Um, not not physically violent, but but um, certainly verbally violent differences of opinion about who was in charge and who was really responsible for the growth. Yep. Um, and um, it, 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 it kind of petered out. Unless you can work together, um, it just flies apart. Yep. So, um, and that was really sad. Um, but um, that's been the, 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 um, the tune for, um, for, for, for many a song in, uh, in advertising. Um, and then um, I joined Communicado uh, as a director for a couple of years, um, just after the Made Once for Warriors. Yep. Learned how to um, make television programs. I was the exec producer for a, company, a program called Made in New Zealand for for a couple of years, which oh, I really enjoyed. Right. Um, and um, but then uh, Neil Roberts, who was the CEO, departed to TVNZ. He tried to appoint me as as the his successor, but his uh, original partners would have none of it. So uh, it all fell apart. But fortunately, then I, I got um, um, picked up by um, Kevin Roberts and Jeff Oletta and Sarchi's, and so uh, went to Sarchi's for um, a few years, which yep. was which was great. But that was the first time I actually worked for somebody else rather than a company I'd started myself. Yep. And so it it, it was good, um, but it wasn't mine. Um, mm -hmm. And um, not that I'm particularly selfish, but you know there are things you want to do on your own, which are different from what you're expected to do by someone in New York or London or whatever. Yep. Um, and then we'd also launched AUT as a university. And um, I found that um, the people were under, I've hired under dozens of graduates over the years, you know, yep. lot, I mean, dozens and dozens. Um, but we'd got to know the senior team at AUT quite well. And I said to Derek McCormick and said, look, I think we're teaching kids all wrong. I think that we're teaching them in silos, you know, to be engineers or designers or accountants or, you know, um, copywriter, whatever it is. Mm -hmm. um, but the, the world's too complex for that now. You cannot have a career in, in one in one discipline all your life anymore. You've got to be more holistic. And so I realized that my own experience, and, and I've been involved now in nine startups. I've learned lots of things. Um, I don't see myself as an accountant or a business person, although I did do accounting briefly for a couple of years when I, it bored me. Did well, you? <laughs> okay. Yeah. But, well, I'm a, I, I can read a balance sheet. I can, sure. I, I, I can do that stuff. But uh, you know, doing... Um, uh, you know, one of those strange terms that accountants used about um, and deductions and um, uh, impairments and goodness knows what, uh, in retrospect, <laughs> bores me. I'd rather say, well, let's find out where we're going rather than where we've been. Yeah. I know where we've been. Mm -hmm. I don't need to, do, to, to redo that. Yep. Um, and I think that now, if I if they're right and they recognise I've got ADD, I'd literally go to sleep and, and, and aboard me when it got to the numbers. Uh, <laughs> Because there's somebody else who does that better than me. Yeah. You know? And that's where I think that I've learned a lot too about, for example, diversity. And we talked about diversity in terms of gender or ethnicity. Mm -hmm. I think that, 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 that we should talk about uh, diversity in terms of, of um, you know, neurodiversity. Neurodiversity, yeah, yeah. I think that there's no point in replacing a boring account, a male accountant with a boring woman accountant on, on a board. Yep. You've got to have some new things differently. And one of the things I did learn on and the research I've I've done on uh, on intelligence in business, um, a guy called Howard Gardner at Harvard developed this notion of multiple intelligences. Oh, yeah. And it's not just left brain, right brain. Uh, he, he, he postulates that, that we have a, at least eight different um, intelligences, if you like, in our in our minds. We have we have verbal intelligence, mm -hmm. um, we have visual intelligence, musical intelligence, physical intelligence, um, and so on. There's, there's, there's eight different eight bits. Different and, and, you know, okay, if, if, yeah. if, if you're a gym bunny, you're pretty strong on physical intelligence or an athlete. <laughs> you know, if you've uh, got strong verbal intelligence, the chances are you'll be, you'll be a, a, a writer. There's emotional intelligence, which could be acting. Um, mm -hmm. Then there's, there's worldly intelligence, which is either politics or you become a hooker, you know. I don't know. <laughs> if you, and 
we we all have all those things. Yep. But, but we'll, in different yeah, amounts. different different strengths. Yeah. yeah. Some, some will be dominant traits we, that, that that we have, and I find it fascinating to actually get people to to find out what trait they are and then yep. play to that. Yeah. Don't try and be what them. Don't try and be what you're not. Just be happy what you're doing. Mm. And I think that that, that and that's one of the. And I've only learnt that kind of recently. And and um, you know, I used to get. I still do, I guess, get really upset and angry at people who um, aren't tolerant, you know, who, who, who um, don't allow for, you know, for variations and, and, and differences in people. Mm-hmm. And I just, I love, I love the diversity of people. And one of the things I've done in the last twelve months, actually, is, is a, a concept of doing your own. Um, I call it my Micopedia, doing a brain dump. A lot of people I advise. Um, I consult now to a lot of you know, different groups and companies, yep. and I get them to think about well, what are you really good at, and what do you really want? Mm-hmm. Um, and uh, and it's really simple. You could actually um, complicate it with all the scientific or commercial nuances or jargon you like. But in the end, um, you know, for example, ask yourself, what, what did you like doing when you were ten or twelve? Mm. I bet it's not much different than that now. <laughs> um, and one guy I know, he. Um, Taken over his father's business, yeah, or was going to. Didn't know whether he really wanted to do it, and I said, "Well, um, what did you like doing when you were ten or twelve? Is it BMX and skateboard?" So, what do you like doing now? Is it oh, motocross? I said, "What's changed now? It's just got a motor." Yeah, he said, "Well, that's not this business." I said, "Okay, but stop thinking about it, this business. Think about the business as a means to an end. Why don't we focus on building this business over the next decade, so you can sell out for?" Twenty million, mm-hmm. and take some of your money and buy a whole block of land outside of town and set a motocross training track. Yeah, his eyes lit up. You know, he yeah. just knew that that was kind of, you know, where he wanted to go. So it's not necessarily an end in itself, but it's a means to that end. Yeah, I think it's really interesting. A lot of people actually say, you know, follow your passion. You need to make your passion your your work. But it's not necessarily true. I mean, it's sort of a, my husband's actually a musician, um, and he really enjoys his music in his spare time. But he doesn't want to make a living out of it. What he needs to do is make a living out of what he does that enables him to do more of what he loves. That's it. that's exactly it. You yeah. don't. It can be a hobby. I mean, my hobby is sketching. No, I'm not. Yes. I'm not good enough to make uh, a living out of out of my art. You can't sell nudes anymore. <laughs> I can't sell nudes anymore. No. Yeah. Well, there are people who do it better than me, and and yeah. and that's not a you know. Um, and and the photographs are sort of are better than 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 than, uh, than sketches by by um, teenage boys. Um, mm-hmm. But but the um, see that in itself though is interesting. The the the, the when you drill down into you know, what skills you've got that can, can make it work. You've got to be at your best. You've got to be top of your game. Mm-hmm. And I, you know, as I said before, I can write and I can draw. Yep. I can't write like Shakespeare. I can't <laughs> draw you know, like Michelangelo. But I know, I'm good enough at it to know the difference between a good, ad, a, a good idea and a bad idea, a mm-hmm. good drawing and a bad drawing. Yep. Um, and so I'm good at actually helping people manage what their skills might be. And then last year I, I started thinking about how do you help people find what they really want to do? Mm. And and I I've, I've call it and, and what I've, I call my Micopedia. Mm. Basically, the Micopedia is yep. is a a brain dump of all the things that are in my head, all the things I'm interested in. And you can see that in front of us. Those of you who who can't see the actual video, there's actually <laughs> the, there you go. There is yeah, the yeah, Micopedia. Yeah, yeah, if you can see the video yeah, version yeah, of it, yeah, yeah. <laughs> awesome. And, 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 and it really is just just about. Um, the, 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 the headings. I mean, everyone will be different, but yep. my headings are um, science, art, literature, geography, history, sport, health, food, wine, music, innovation, exploration, philosophy, religion, politics, business, education, and life, love, and leisure. And so um, under those headings, I put the things under those headings. You know, what's science? Well, to me, it's quantum mechanics. It's um, thermodynamics. It's um, you know, planetary theory, neutron stars. Um, I'm just really fascinated with the cosmos. And yeah. we're, the, the James Webb Space Telescope is taking up a lot of my time at the moment. <laughs> and, and to, you and my husband both, yeah. <laughs> I, I come home and I find him watching YouTube videos on this stuff. It's like, okay. <laughs> well, but that's me too. Yeah. Yeah, I, I mean, I, I, you can forget the Kardashians. I'm really interested in how many – you know, there is something like – 670 quadrillion stars wow. out there in the universe. I did There's not know that. about 460 yeah. million galaxies that they've counted so far. Mm. Now, that's a, lot of, that's a lot of stuff. And if there's 670 quadrillion stars, imagine how many planets. You could multiply that by five or six maybe because mm-hmm. there'll be planets around those things. Sure. That's a, it's a lot of planets. And you think, and then you start thinking about all well, the origins of life. Uh, and I'm fascinated because I was actually – 
I grew up in Nelson. I was in the Nelson Cathedral Choir. I was even thinking about going to the church at one stage mm-hmm. until I, you know, and I was a devout Christian until I wasn't. You know, when I realized that there's, there's, it's too big. There are no absolutes out there. There's just things that are happening all the time. I remember sitting or standing next to my mother who was very devout. And as a choir boy at Nelson, and, and Nelson Cathedral, I was in church three times a week, you know, mm-hmm. you know twice on Sunday and once on Wednesday. Mm-hmm. And so I was very well steeped in it. I read the, book, the good book from cover to cover. Mm-hmm. And I realized then that there were too many gaps and uh, there were too many things that I couldn't explain or weren't explained properly. And I suddenly realized that there's there's no evidence. To me, there's no evidence yep. of the existence of a God and particularly a Christian God. And if you just think, for example, about that 670 quadrillion stars and, mm. and, 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 and the planets around them, that's an enormous number. And I wonder if God has decided that he's going to actually send one of his kids down to um, save everybody or all living beings on those other planets, if they're any like us. Or he's going to save the amoeba on sort of planet XYZ Zog you know, in some far off galaxy. Yeah. And I suddenly thought, this is just silly, silly, silly stuff. Yeah. Um, and um, it's actually putting the world you know, in the wrong way. And we can, we don't have to have any kind of absolute um, in, in terms of building our own morality. We should be happy with what we've got. I wake up most mornings and look out the window and we live quite near the domain and, and it's, it's, it's looking across at the trees, the different colours, and I just marvel and I'm in awe of the beauty of the planet. This morning, there was a beautiful little tui, it's iridescent blue, and inside it's black. Looking out, I was fascinated with it and stood yeah. there for a, you know, for a minute or two just watching the, the, the tui and how lovely that is and just the, I'm in awe of the world. I'm in awe of the universe. And that's kind of enough for me. Yeah. And we've got friends and my lovely th- you know, therapeutic wife sort of you know, consoles me through these strange things and <laughs> tells me not to be so silly. Um, but, but, but that's it. And I just then keep thinking, well, I'd like to embark on something else. And now I'm determined to spend the rest of my life helping people find how creative they can be. And mm. do help them do their own Micropedias or do your Debrapedia you know, yep. and sit down with you and say, okay, what is it? In fact, we um, 18 months ago, a woman who did our course at, at, at AUT, the, uh, the Practical Innovation Program, um, mm. uh, or she rang to say, could she do it? And I said, well, yes. A, a friend of hers had done it before, and so she had some of the material and said, oh, that looks fascinating. Can I do it? I said, yep. of course you can. Um, but what's your idea? And I said, what do you mean? And I said, well, it, it, the program's really about teasing out an idea to bring it to market. Mm-hmm. I mean, we, we can help you find an idea if you want to, yep. um, but it, it's really about seeing whether this idea will work and can you turn it into a business. And so she wanted to do that. And so she, I got her to do her Anna, Annapedia. Anna was her name. She was a lovely person. She lived in Wanaka. And, and she had been a, uh, an event organizer in Wanaka, but with COVID, uh, no visitors, no, no, all the big events got cancelled. So uh, mm-hmm. she'd lost her job but wanted to stay in Wanaka. And so I said, well, let's just drill down into your Anapedia and find if we can join some dots and link the things that you already know. Because I believe that everyone's everyone's creativity is already in their heads. Right. They've just got to drill down and find out what those things are and then join some dots. So do you think it's been stifled by the way that we're brought up? Because I know that when I was growing up, I really, really loved people. I loved languages. I loved helping people. I loved running my little businesses. And then my parents all said, oh, no, 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 you've got to go and do something more sensible. And so you're, you're good at science. You should go and do biochem. Sorry, not actually. I go and do science, and I end up doing biochemistry. Um, and their rationale was, you know, well, it will help you find a good husband because you'll be intelligent. You better have articulate conversations. Um, and so I ended up being a scientist, and I hated science. It wasn't what I wanted to do. And if you think about it, what I was doing back when I was probably 10 years old, I'm not back doing it again now. I'm working with people. I'm helping people. I'm running businesses. Um, but in the in the interim, I had this whole, this is what you should be doing. Yeah. No, I think you're absolutely right. I, yeah. think, I think we get we got diverted away from our natural path. Yeah. I'm a, I'm, perhaps maybe if my father had said alive, I would never have done, done so many different things. But I'm quite glad I've taken the scenic route through life now. Yeah. Um, because I've touched lots of different things. I've tried on lots of coats. Um, I've also been married three times, which has been expensive. But but but, uh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> but you get that. Uh, but now I'm happy, you yeah. know? and 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 I think happy's good. Yeah. And I don't mean contented because you you never I'm too restless to be you know, content and always looking for something else. But I found that you know if this diagnosis program I'm going through now <laughs> it turns out to be accurate, what it does do is tell you yes you, you wander off and you have. I've got an attention deficit disorder. You know, mm-hmm. um, I, 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 
anything that isn't interesting, just, I just switch off. Right. Board. I'm uh, often told I'm not present. Yeah. So how is that different to that's ADD versus yeah. ADHD? Well, um, it's the same. It's the same thing, but one's a, one's a deficiency, one's a hyperactivity. Right. And so the, the, um, my grandson, for example, is, is ADHD, uh-huh. and he's uh, he's got wheels. You know, he's and and my son was the same. I in fact I remember visiting a lawyer when we were quite young and getting organising finance for a house and have made the mistake of taking a young son, as probably three or four at the time, with us. Mm-hmm. I remember the lawyer saying, "Has that kid got wheels?" Um, and and I think that that's part of it right. but the flip side of that same is is you lose interest mm-hmm. fast and stuff you're not interested in mm. yeah. um and so yeah, but you also the the upside is that you have a superpower is mm. hyper focus yeah. you know for example if i'm writing a book um i'll be totally focused for you know three months six months whatever it is in my thesis took me two years but i get up you know, in the morning at mm. about four or five o'clock and I'd write away furiously, and I'd give myself a target to do that stuff. Right. But as soon as it was finished, uh, I was there with my feet up looking out the window again um, because uh, until I found something else that was interesting. Mm. So the flip side of the inattention is hyper, hyper focus. Yep. Um, and I saw it in, in my grandson last Christmas. We gave him he's, uh, 11. We gave him a, a Lego um it was the um, a uh, stormtrooper's head. Oh yeah, um, and I think it you know, cost us one hundred fifty. It was one of those big ones. Yeah, yeah. And it was for for nineteen years plus. In other words, for adults. Um, uh, he sat down and at Christmas afternoon and did it in two and a half hours. Wow. He just uh, utterly sat on the couch, focused. just focused. Yeah, yeah. And he and and he, and he does that. So you think, okay, well, how do we find? Because there must be lots and lots of people out there who end up being disappointed, or like your parents, you know, yeah. uh, heading off and the oh no, you can't do that. And we get creativity knocked out of us. Yes, um, and we should actually enhance it. Now it doesn't need to be your job, but it can be. It can be your your, your, your hobby, mm. like a, and, and a hobby you do with like assiduous concentration. Um, I I, uh, uh, I keep my I take my sketchbook everywhere we, where we travel. And it could be in France, it could be in Vietnam, it could be wherever it is. And I'll sketch things. Um, I hate shopping. <laughs> and Michelle loves it. But I'll sit down with a sketchbook and I'll, I'll draw something. Uh, or, you know, and it's a record of where we've been. Mostly draw, mostly uh, buildings. Um, I'm not really drawing uh, drawing figures. But that might be a bit more practice. But it, it, I also, um, I think it's something like a couple hundred ske- sketches in my sketchbook. I've got 5,000, more than 5,000 photographs in my, in my, in my iPhone. Wow. Um, but I'm... Um, I can't remember many of them at all, but most of those sketches I could draw from memory. Right. In other words, that, and there's some great research that came out of the University of Waterloo in Toronto last year um, that really proved what I've always suspected is that drawing doubles your capacity for, for, for recall. Yeah. So, I even think that um, writing things down, you see, is more remarkable. I mean, I, I'm actually a real big believer that actually writing things down as well commits it more to, to your brain than typing on a computer or, or whatever it might be. I mean, I really enjoy having a, a notepad and pen. Yep. Well, in fact, they, they, they compared that, but uh, they said that, that drawing again um, mm-hmm. multiplies that ability to. There's something about the the the, the mechanical. Um, it sears it in your mind, you know? yeah. um, and and it talked about sketching, it talked about um, uh, writing notes, but um, but they said that that, that drawings the, the ability to draw something or even simplify it down yeah. um, as um, like a mental image um, again doubles your your recall. Yeah. And I, I think that, that I used to do quite well in exams. See, that's the other thing too. I didn't, I didn't, I didn't know I was bright. Um, after my dad died, um, I was really, pretty um, knocked off my uh, off my perch and felt very. I was very embarrassed um, uh, that he'd committed suicide. I was a bit ashamed of it. Um, so I'd go away and hide more often than not. And we shifted around quite a lot. So I never, I never had a group of you know, mates forever. Like a lot of young guys I know. Grow up together from age five and stick with them till you know, yep. they're the best man at their wedding. Um, I wasn't wasn't like that. Um, I'm reasonably gregarious and have, have, have a good range of, 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 of friends now. But in those days, uh, I, I I didn't. So I didn't really. St- I didn't know what I wanted to do. I wasn't, wasn't steered in any, any any in any particular direction. And in, in, in hindsight, I'm glad I wasn't. Mm-hmm. Um, because I, I, I thought, well, I've you know, charted a bit of a course, and I'll just pursue it and um, do the things that I that I like doing, and making a, make a business out of the things that I that I I love doing. Um, 
I mean, I'm not a particularly good businessman, um, but I'm, a, I'm an ideator, you know, and so I love working with people to help them to build their ideas. Mm. Um, and I think that, that – that, see, now I've wandered off track again because I've gone down a rabbit hole. <laughs> <That's> I, and, <laughs> I, 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 there was a, a really important point I was going to make there, Deborah. I, I've totally forgotten what it was. <laughs> so, so I suppose um, – because I think I haven't been actually properly diagnosed, but when I, I've done a couple of self-analysis talks. I think I, I suffer from ADHD. And I didn't re- – I was a naughty child at school. I was super bright, yeah. but I was always asked to leave the classroom or go and stand in the corner and, and you know, behave myself. Yeah. And now I just think it was because I was easily bored. You know, I was just yep. – there was, and I've had this – I call it a super – power. I, I work with 20, 30 clients at any one time. I always know exactly where I am with each of them. I know exactly what's going on. And then I get completely distracted and completely bored and go off on things. So, <sighs> but why why was that um, seen as a negative? Because I sort of see it as a superpower. Well, yeah, I'm exactly the same. In fact, that, well, that was what I was going to make. That, yeah. um, uh, I, I thought I was a bit slow and a bit dumb because my Marks were all over the place. Yeah. One one term I'd be top of the class. Oh. Next term I, I'd be bottom. You know, uh, I uh, failed uh, like yeah, ten. Yeah. I, I did ten O levels. I failed three of them, and it wasn't because I couldn't do them because I retook them, got all A's across the board. Yes. But I just got another bit bored by doing ten. <laughs> <isn't it? laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah, well, well, yeah. But that's it. And that's it. And I think the, we we need to we're teaching kids all wrong. You know, mm. and, and and I think that um, you know again just going back to my grandson, um, he. he, he um, my daughter and and and, and husband took took the boys to Europe. Uh, he's Welsh, and they took him back to UK. And they went to Paris, and um, um, uh, um, well, obviously in Paris, they saw the Notre Dame and so on. Mm-hmm. And a few years earlier, I'd been over there, and and I'd um, I'd sketched. I was sitting in front of the cathedral and I sketched it, and it started to rain. So I took a photograph of where I was sitting, so I remember it, and mm-hmm. thought, I'll, I'll finish it one day. Mm-hmm. Never did, um, uh, and, and then. Um, didn't think about it again until it started burning down a couple of years ago. Yeah. So I dragged this sketch out and thought I'd better finish it. Um, and before it's all gone forever and ever and ever. Yes. Um, and uh, then um, my daughter and, and, and little Ben came over and he saw what I was drawing. He said, oh, that's not drama. I said, yeah. I said, well, why don't you draw it too? He said, well, I, you know, I can't do it. I said, well, just copy mine. He said, oh, that's different. I, can't. I said, no, it's not. How do you think the great masters did? They didn't, didn't do the original. They, they copied things. Copying things, I'm talking not about rec- um, recording exactly what it is. I'm, I'm talking about you advancing your own skills at being able to do it. And he sat down and, and basically copied mine. And it's it's not perfect, yeah. but it's brilliant for 11 year old. I think, wow, you know, I wish I could draw that well when I was his age. Yeah. And I realized that. It's the other thing, too, when you put a be self aware and, and, and I hate this wokeness of you know, the, everyone being told they're okay at everything, and they're not. There are, you know, you'll find out very quickly in life that there are others who are manifestly better than you. Mm. I'm, but, um, again, at school, um, every year in the South Island, they had what they called the, the South Island Secondary Schools Art Exhibition. It's run by the Christchurch Star, and it was a travelling show. It was the end of every year. Um, kids from all secondary schools would submit you know, work and the show would go around from town to town, from you know, Invercargill to Nelson. And when it finally did come to Nelson, we got uh, um, a day off school to, to help hang these um, drawings and paintings in the uh, Cedar Art Gallery. I remember, um, and it was in my final year, I had three pieces in, in the exhibition, so I thought it was pretty cool. And I remember um, pulling a painting out of a crate and going to the headmaster and saying, uh, to um, Fort Master, and I said, look at this, I can't paint this well. And it was a hawk flying over tussock, and it turned out to be a guy called Graham Sidney. And I thought, <laughs> I, can say. I, 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 can't, I can't paint that well. Yeah. And I thought, and that's when I realised, even if I go to art school, um, I won't be good enough to be able to paint that well. That guy it was a genius. Mm. And I, 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 and after, in fact, we were shooting a, a TV commercial down at um, Middlemarch and some years ago uh, for for Spates, I think it was. And I met him. Uh, he, he lived further up the road, and oh, yeah. and, and would actually block the uh, um, uh, the road up to his place uh, with the set and so on. Mm-hmm. And but one of the guys in the crew knew him, so we so he chatted around, have a had a couple of drinks and a coffee with us and so on. And uh, so I was talking to him. I said, "Look, uh, I want to th- uh, thank you for." Uh, making damn sure I never actually became an art teacher because I saw it. And he said, you kind of wanted to do it very badly. Mm-hmm. And he was dead right. Yeah. He was dead right because I had a vision of myself then going to art school, being posted to Greymouth High School and some little you know, 15-year-old kid with freckles and a mullet trying to teach <laughs> him how to, how to do 
wallpaper patterns and things. I think yeah. I'd, I'd have lost the will to live trying <laughs> to think you know, to do that with a kid. And so you've got to, you've got to do what what. Yeah. what you're going to be happy doing. Well, and what you're good at. I think the same thing happens in business as well. I mean, in the beginning, we have to be good at everything as, as a, a business owner. But over time, you've actually got to just delegate and elevate. Let people get on with the stuff that you're not so great at and that you don't even like very much and let somebody else do it. Uh, because much as yeah. you and I don't enjoy numbers, there are people out there who absolutely love numbers and who get a thrill out of it. So let them do it. Um, free up your time to do the things you're really good at. Absolutely. <laughs> absolutely. Yeah. And and. The best, the best managers um, are in fact managers, not bosses. Mm. And you know, the the, so the best people allow people freedom, allow them to make mistakes. Yep. Give them, you know, give them some freedom and see how good they are, mm. and give them responsibility before you think they're ready for it. Even yep. you know, give them a chance to see, and and you'll find it. It can be sad and savage because so, so, they might break, you know, um, but but allow them to do that to see how how far they can go without breaking. Yeah, uh, and also you, I think you always learn more from your mistakes than you do from your. Um, well, personally, I think you learn more from the mistakes than you do from your successes anyway. So in some respects, it's good to have some failures along the way because you then learn those lessons. You won't do them again. Well, so, yeah, yeah, if you burn your fingers on on on, on the stove, you won't do it again. <laughs> I have to say this whole um, we've got a number of parks close to where we live. We live over um, in Freeman's Bay, and you know all these rubber things underneath oh. the playgrounds now does my head in because you kind of go there's no consequence anymore right if you were no. stupid on the swings and fell off and hurt yourself you didn't do it again because you hurt yourself now if you no. do it you bounce <laughs> it's not so much a consequence is it yeah exactly yeah. exactly it is and it's a tough world and and we are cautious, and in this country in particular see that's the other thing i've got a real theory about the people who who who, who have come to this country, mm. be it 800 years ago in a walker mm. or 180 years ago in a sailing ship or, or a, eight minutes ago in a 380, <laughs> you come here because it's, uh, it's a challenge and it's for hope and it requires courage. Yeah. You, you, th you come here because you think there's something you can do or add that will be better from where, for, than, than where you were. Mm -hmm. Now, that requires hope and courage. Yeah. Um, and that's our DNA. Sadly, um, and, th and that would have happened in early Māori, it would have happened, certainly happened in early Pākehā, it certainly mm -hmm. happened in people from Asia, Africa, wherever it is, the refugees that come here. And we've got an interesting mix of people, but the, the thing that's in common of all of them is a, a, a DNA of hope and courage. Yeah. Sadly, um, that DNA of hope and courage, which is passed on to, to, to your children and offspring, means that the ones who don't see enough opportunity yet go off. Yeah. And the ones that are left are the timid ones. Mm. And I think that we are now over, you know, a quarter of our population lives somewhere else. Um, and I see it so often. My, my thesis on the alchemy of creativity in business was really about what, what does it take uh, in this country? And there is a, there is a, um, a DNA strand of um, being unafraid. Yeah. Uh, we're, not, we're not intimidated by power or prestige. Um, but we do things. You, for example... Um, although we're a tiny country, we are sixth in the world at authoring reports and per capita report um, oh, really? um, authoring reports in high tech publications. Okay. But we're sixty third in the world behind Senegal and Bulgaria about high tech manufactured output. Why? <laughs> so because we can write reports, but we can't do it. <laughs> yeah, yeah. There's no money here. Right. There's no encouragement for us. Yeah. We've got successive governments that have. Um, if you're poor and needy, you get pretty much all you want. You no, know, all you. Uh, not all you want, because you can never get all you want. But there'll be a focus on you. Mm -hmm. There'll be a focus on people not hitting the ground. There's no focus on people uh, exploring the heights. Right. There's no um, – we, we underspend on research and technology. Only 2% of our GDP goes in, into that, which is half of what most OECD, OECD countries does. Yep. And, there's no, and there's a safety net for people who fail, but there's no encouragement for people who try. Yeah. Um, and, and, it, and even – even our education system, it's, it's now AUT now, is basically a Maori and Pacifica uh, um, uh, training tool uh, for people in probably uh, interests that wouldn't have been worth a degree mm. 30 years ago. Right. Um, and, and, yet, and it gives them a false expectation of what they can do. Because you know, it was initially that under the Helen Clark government, it was all about you know, let's, not, um, let's not force them to take um, Mac jobs. Yep. Why not? Why not? 
uh, um, and and let's you know, train them to a point, and, and it gives them false expectations of where they can go. Right. And a lot of them can't even get to university because they're still you know, they're poor, and they're so poor because our government doesn't husband its resources very you know, very well at all. There are too many um, people in um, uh, kind of wonk jobs in government, you know, and just, just the, the social science wonks or the you know, um, traffic wonks or whatever it is, and 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 and, and there are too many of them. Yep. Our, our, our um, public service, both in government and local authority, has has, has doubled in the last um, two decades. Yeah, it's huge. Uh, it's crazy, and, and, and it crushes a crushing weight of bureaucracy. I, I'm sure both the regulations and the cost of them mm. uh, has increased enormously. And in fact, I wrote a blog about it a few months ago, and it was, I can't remember the exact numbers off the top of my head, but it's something like 222,000 public servants uh, in 2012 uh, in government, and there was, I think, 89,000. So it's just about 300,000 um, in Public service um, in 2012 now, and so what's that? 10, 12 years uh, that, that, that we're talking at least um, um, doubling, doubling in, 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 in that time. And, and for what benefit? <laughs> for what benefit? Yeah. And a lot of them are, are, are policy wonks. You know, for example, um, why are we driving um, all kinds of rules and regulations around bus lanes and cycle lanes at enormous cost? For who? About five people? No. They say, oh, yes, but it's a, it's a, a climate change response. Is it really? I would rather have a, a climate change response that's focused on clean cars. Yeah. Yeah, and now, of course, and, and, and I think that we've now got people, you know, buses spewing out diesel, and they're driving past a whole list of cars who are also spewing out um, – because the, they're parked, because the bus lane's been taken up. Um, they're, they're parked there and idling, spewing stuff into the atmosphere while a bus goes past with 12 people on it, you know, yeah. or five people on it. And, and it's I just, suppose they, they'd argue chicken and egg thing. It's like if you don't provide it, you can't use it. But um, I don't know that we'll ever get to, to that here in Auckland anyway. I mean, I've lived in Sydney for many years, and public transport over there was easy. Yeah, it it is. isn't easy over here. Um, Melbourne is too. Um, yeah, Melbourne's uh, the same here, right, yeah. Yeah, there are lots of cities in the world. London is bloody brilliant, you know, because there's one every five minutes, you know, mm. and, and uh, we didn't build any subways here. And it's not a cycling city. It's too hilly. Yeah. LA is good. Christchurch is good. But yeah. but this place is just – and there's no centre. Yeah, you know, you're not, we're True. not all going to, to CBD London. We're not all heading yeah, into Piccadilly. Yeah, you know, yeah. We've got five different centres. I mean, I, And that's where we don't have critical thinking. Mm-hmm. We have people that are trained, and, and they would have researched but he traffic issues up to the wazoo. And I'm sure they get paid a, a, a bonus for putting another set of traffic lights. Yeah. <laughs> Are you, oh, sorry. I'm, no, it's okay. I used to work for council. I was actually the marketing manager of transport. And so some, of the, sorry, you some, know of, the, some of the frustrations you're talking about right now were exactly the reason why I could not stay there. Because no. it was just, it was bollocks, absolute bollocks, yeah. what we used to talk about and, and nothing ever got done. It's like, come on, when are we actually going to do something? Let's just stop talking and let's take some action. But anyway, wasn't a good fit for government, I've decided. No, you, <laughs> yeah. oh, you'll be the last person, I think. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, so going back to our original thing, so neurodiversity, um, you know, having different people represented, people finding their own passion. What are your tips and tools for people who perhaps are feeling like they've been pushed down a particular route or not embracing their true selves? What would you suggest they do? Well, what, I'm, what I do do now when those people, I talk to them, um, yep. is do their own Markipedia or Debrapedia or yep. whatever it is. So how, how, what do you do? You just put... So, uh, well, I, I, um, I've got a template. Of, uh, okay, some, yeah. And, 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 and Can we share that template online? Oh, yeah, yeah, okay, yeah, we'll do yeah, that, yeah. yeah. It's an, it's an, it's an, yeah I'll, um, I'll, I'll, I'll send it to you. Right, thank you. Um, and and uh, oh, I can't even find it now. Oh, yeah, That's well, right. They're, so you basically they're, they're, got you got how many boxes there? Yeah, yeah, I, I've, got, I've got twelve boxes. Yeah. Yep. But but it, but it, it could it could be it could be ten boxes. I think that um, Anna did her Annapedia. Um, yep. In 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 and where is hers? I can't even find it now. But it, do, it, it, um, it doesn't matter how many. It, it, it's what your interests are. Yep. If you're interested in horse racing or, or um, you know, flower arranging or whatever it is, mm-hmm. and un- underneath in, underneath each of those headings, you put well, which what literature? What literature do you do? You, are you are you fascinated by? Mm-hmm. Um, and and for me, um, yeah, it'll be you know, what art. Uh, well, I'm interested in prehistoric art. Yep. Um, I've been to the Lascaux Caves in in, in, in France, or at least the the, the uh, the replica, Lasco <laughs> Caves, uh, Leonardo, Titian, Michelangelo, Brunelleschi, you know, Caravaggio. I was really interested in Brunelleschi because of perspective, how he, you know, he invented perspective drawing and, and so. Yep. Um, and 
I love the Renaissance painters and um, what the Medici's did, the Vermeer. I love the chiaroscuro of, of um, what Vermeer did, the light and shade. I know about, um, um, I've been trained in oil painting, gouache, pencil, pen and ink, and Taglia, New Zealand art, from Linda to, um, to Hammond, um, Sydney, Hattery, Angus. I mean, I just, I, I, I studied those things. So I, I've got a good picture in my mind of what the breadth and depth of, of, of art might be. I'm not an expert in it. Nope. But I could I could sustain a conversation about it at a dinner party, say. Yeah. And 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 if if I if there's something there that someone triggers off, it's like when you're sitting at someone next to someone at, at a dinner party, and you say, well, they ask you what you do, you tell them, and they say, what do you do? And they'll say, well, I'm actually interested in sixth century hand dynasty ceramics. And you, you're either going to say, oh, oh good. <laughs> no idea what you're talking about, but yes, that sounds great. Yeah, no, but yeah. it does. You say, oh wow, yeah. tell me more. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. Or just to say, look, I'm an astrophysicist. I think. Terrific. I've been wanting to talk about astrophysicists for years. Yeah. In fact, I'm, I'm trying to organize a, a, um, a dinner party with some friends who, who's, whose friend is a brain surgeon. I yeah. gladly want to know to yeah. talk about, talk about uh, I neurology. want to come to that dinner party. Yeah, There'll be yeah. wine involved too, yeah. right? Oh, yeah, yeah, oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, good. <laughs> yeah. And so, so where it goes. And then, and then again, I mean, just even talk about wine. Yep. Yeah, um, when I left advertising, I planted a vineyard. I thought, yeah, that's what you do. I'd read a year of Provence. Yeah. Yep. So I bought some land and, and – Planted a vineyard. I didn't realize how much I hated horticulture until I had a vineyard. Uh, <laughs> yeah. was, drinking wine is quite different <laughs> to actually growing the yeah. grapes, right? Yeah. yeah, but you pick out what bit, what bit of wine are you good at? You yeah. Know? And I was good at the marketing and distribution mm. and, and so on. Yeah. So, I mean, to me, um, advice to anybody is is uh, do do their own, you know, Debrapedia, Michaelpedia, Peterpedia, Johnopedia, Miriapedia, whatever it is. Yep. Do a brain dump, and I'll sit with them, or I'll coach them through it, or I'll give them a copy of mine, and and be and force them because most people will look at it and say, "Oh no, I don't." But I'm not interested in anything. Yes, you are. What did you like doing? What was the what? What fascinated you about? I don't know some singer, you know, Elvis Presley. You know, <laughs> and was it the sequence? I don't know. Um, put it down. Yep. Not something that you're an expert in, but something that just triggered your fancy. You know, all those years ago. So you just, you know, um. Tina Turner and her hair. I mean, oh, I don't care what it is, you know? <laughs> yeah. or it's the way the butterfly you know, flies. Or remember the time you went to Hooker Falls? Now, have you thought about the the volume of water that goes? I mean, just all that sort of stuff. Yeah. And it triggers memories. Mm. And again, and then, and uh, for me, my thing in, in going around the world is sketching, because I used to worry that I couldn't paint feelings. Like I couldn't do Edvard Munch's scream. You know, I couldn't. Yep. Um, I didn't know how to paint feelings, and probably it was a bit stultified because my you know, emotional really, gene disappeared when my father died, I think, mm. um, and and so I, I felt I couldn't tap into some emotions the way that other people could. Um, but then, more recently, when I've been sketching, I realised that I don't, I can't paint the pain or the joy, but I can paint joyfully and. Or, or painfully. Yes. I remember being uh, in Cromwell Road in, in London and drawing the the um, um, the gallery, uh, the in, um, ah, Museum of Modern, um, no, um, Natural History Museum, right. which is an angry old Edwardian building. <laughs> and I actually drew, uh, in my mind's eye, I saw this angry old Edwardian man in a stiff starch collar at a tall bench, you know, with a quill pen, designing it because it's a grim, it's a grim, mm. um, uh, it, it, the Waterhouse was his name. It's the brother of the guy that started um, Price Waterhouse. Or, you know, ah, yeah. okay, I didn't know that. Uh, yeah. yep. it's one of those, but I, 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 was, I had in my mind's eye what that man looked like. <laughs> yes. <laughs> and, then, and then when I look at that drawing I did of, of, of oh, I haven't got it here, but, but of, of, um, of the building, I thought, what an angry building it is. Yes. You know, it wouldn't have been that way if Walt Disney had designed it. You know? <laughs> yep. And so on. And so, so, but I realized that I'm I'm drawing angrily hmm. or happily or yep. whatever it is. And, and, and then and, it comes through. And it comes through. Yeah. And, or, or a sketch of a temple in Bali. <laughs> as I, 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 and I remember sketching a temple and, I, and there was a gamelan orchestra playing in the background. Plunk, 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 plunk. And when I was drawing it, I, I, I did it very carefully with a little tiny pen, you know. Oh. So, so I, I felt gentle yes when i was drawing it rather than rather, rather than, than angry, angry. Yeah. yeah and so yeah. and so and that's just a thing you realize about yourself so yep uh, what i'm saying is just try those things mm. really simple things that we can all do oh I, people say oh, i can't do that yes you can yeah. um put down under your drug all the places you visited and mm. what do you remember and then sit down and look at it just like we did with anna um she did her anapedia and she was interested in outdoors gardening um 
wildlife, uh, uh, native flora and fauna stuff. I said, well, if you can't do organize your ski races and you know, triathlons and stuff, why don't you take people on foraging tours into the bush mm-hmm. and tell them what they can chew and eat and how you plant, plant this and where it came from? And so we did a little, little business plan for her called the Bunch Punch. Oh. And so that she could you know, get people to, to eat this, do that. She rang back about a month later and said, look, I've got a better idea. I'm going to plant a little garden with you know, um, great little um, organic seeds and stuff. Mm-hmm. And when local visitors from Christchurch or Auckland come to Wanaka, they can tell me what um, flight they're on. And I'll arrange to have a little pottage tray with them for you know, herbs and put a basil and a few chives waiting for them. And they'll love me and then go on subscription onto my um, database and I'll um, sell them uh, organic seeds um, at, at the appropriate times of the year and um, put out a newsletter telling them what to plant this month and so on. Oh, that's perfect. Okay, so, great. Uh, yeah. yeah. So it came from what her passions were. Yeah. Okay, so in terms of the um, the diagnosis that you're kind of working through at the moment, yep. what do you reckon to treating it? Because I know that I've got a few friends who've got ADHD and then they've gone and got treatment and they've said it's the best thing ever. I'm a bit nervous because I kind of think, actually, I quite like the superpower that it gives me. And so I'm not yeah. sure that I want to treat it in any way, shape or form. <laughs> well, interesting. I, when I, uh, the, um, the, the, I, I wrote this book um, 20 years ago. with uh, Kickstart. Your it? Kicks yeah. Your Creativity. Kicks, yeah, creativity. Yep. Yep. But, um, and as well as the Saatchis, I... Um, uh, I'd always wondered why it's so hard for creative people to sell ideas to non-creative people. Right. And I got Rebecca, a psychologist friend, to, to come up and spend a week in the agency, or four days actually in there. Yep. I said, well, watch how we behave and explain why our clients don't recognize our genius. And she said, well, they probably think you're Fruit Loops for a start. <laughs> yes. But given that, um, you were probably, and she put us through Myers-Briggs profiling. Oh, yeah. I uh, didn't know you'd done my, Anyway, turned out all the senior team at Sarchi's, apart from the CFO, we're on the intuitive side of the ledger. Right. We were all ends. Ah. And our big, biggest clients at the time were um, Telecom and Lion Nathan, huge public organi- public companies, big yes. organizations. And said, so I bet you they're all S's. Yeah, is that what the, the opposite the, is? The, okay. the, yeah, yeah, yeah. You yeah. are intuitive. Yes. And they are probably non intuitive. Mm-hmm. You are outnumbered four to one. Yeah. Only 24% of the population is intuitive. Mm-hmm. And 76% isn't, and they've got all the money. And they don't want you to come in waving your arms around with these fanciful ideas you've got. They want to, you to prove to them that this will work, mm-hmm. whatever it is. Yep. And so we, um, it changed the way we pitched. And so I think that it was about talking in the, that iterative sequential. So you need to understand who you are, yep. what your preferences are, mm-hmm. and also um, um, the way your brain works. About you know, that Gardner's I was talking about, the different, the different, different kind of intelligences we have. Yeah. You know, self awareness. You know, it's what do they say in the uh, the temple at Delphi, Plato or whoever it was, who had it built. Um, the inscription above the doorway said, "Know thyself." Mm. And so, and, and so that's been it's as true as the day is long. Um, you've got, you've got to understand yourself so you can understand where you fit into it. Yeah. So do that do that work. You know, in other words, do do those tests mm-hmm. so you don't so you don't go to your grave wondering. You may go to your grave thinking you've failed or you or you've won, but you won't you won't Never wonder. Die, you'll know yourself. You'll know you've done the best you can with what you've got. Yep. And you're happy. Mm. And you're surrounded by people who make you happy. And you can spread your own little you know, as you say when you were at Sunday school, Jesus wanted you for a sunbeam. You know, so, so you you do those things that, that spread your little light into the world. So that to me is 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 really the key. So yep. know, know yourself, do those simple tests. If they want to, um, give me a call. Yep. Or go, go on to my, my website. Uh, so, yeah, how do they find you, Mike? Um, um, www.mikehutchison.com. Okay, perfect. And and, and I, I, I'll take them on for a, as a, on a consulting basis or give them a, one of the tests that they might do through uh, or introduce them to the Micopedia. Yep. And happy to do a Zoom call with them and work them through it. And, <clears throat> and so that it's really just a matter of, I'm figuring out, you know, what do you want to do? What, how, how, how do you think I can help? Mm-hmm. Um, I'm a bit like you. I've got you know, and any number of, of of clients who I talk to on a casual basis. I'm a director of a number of companies on a semi permanent basis, but mm-hmm. others, I just I just love talking to people about helping them overcome their 
the obstacles they might have to, to happiness or the obstacles they might have towards creativity, yeah. in particular creativity yeah. is, is and, and what that means. And there are some quite clear definitions, because my thesis was about that, of them. well, what is creativity? Mm. And creativity is not just scribbling on the walls with, with a crown like a two-year-old. Um, creativity is working within a framework, and it has to have three things. It has to have, it has to be original. And when I say original, it has to be a new way of assembling it. I mean, like uh, Steve Jobs didn't invent the telephone, didn't invent the touchscreen, didn't invent the, the, the computer, but he put them all together yeah, in one thing. Yeah. So that, that was the originality bit. Yep. So it doesn't have to be, you know, because, because there's, nothing, there's nothing original. Yep. Ecclesiastes 1 9, for those of you who know the Bible, there is no new thing under the sun. <laughs> yeah. And so, and, and, and so all you need to do is just figure out how can you put things together in a different way that, that makes it unusual. Mm -hmm. So it has to be original, yep. uh, it has to be useful. Useful, yep. Um, yeah, so have utility, but the utility could be it just looks beautiful, you know, mm -hmm. and, um, or, or it can be you know, functional, yep. and it has to be recognised. Just because you're wandering around with you know, purple hair and yeah, you know, and and you, you fat in public, that doesn't make it doesn't <laughs> that doesn't classify as creativity. Yeah, it's stupidity. So the, the, there's a fine line between stupidity and creativity. Fair but, but it's, it's got to be useful, original, original and, and recognized. And, 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 and recognized. Yeah, fantastic. Uh, and that's it. <laughs> <laughs> Mike, thank you so much. We could talk for hours and probably will do it. We'll open a bottle of wine in a moment. But yeah, um, thank you for your time. Thank you for sharing. If any of you are kind of feeling like you're a little bit lost or, uh, you know, worrying about the way that you see the world and maybe the way you've been forced to see the world, uh, do go to MikeCutcherson.com. Uh, I know Mike, he will absolutely help you. Um, and it's certainly a lot of fun on the way too. Thanks, Mike. Thank you. It's been brilliant. Loved it.